I'm an idiot. You heard me right. I said that. I'm an idiot. What can I say? A couple weeks ago, the Fort Wayne Ham Fest took place in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I had my mind set on lowering my radio footprint, meaning I think I have one too many radios and I have a lot of HTs. Can I do away with my car radio? And I thought about it and I went, absolutely I can. I have one of these things. This is a two meter amp. A silent key left his radio bits to the local club and the local club held a silent auction, kind of appropriate, don't you think? On his gear, I won this sucker. Condition unknown. I tested it at home. Turns out, perfectly fine. Didn't pay too much for it. So I decided definitely time to sell the car radio and replace it with that amp and my FT3D. After all, the radio that I had in my car was an FTM300 and the FT3D has a lot of the same features. And for what my use is, believe me, the FT3D is enough. Here comes the part where I'm an idiot. I tested this amplifier with that radio, not with my FT3D. And every time I tested with that radio, no problems. So I installed the amp and the FT3D in my car and occasionally it will not transmit. Sometimes it transmits and sometimes it doesn't. And I couldn't find rhyme or reason for it. I took the cover off and checked all the components and they all seem to be okay. Everything comes back measured where I expect it to be, so not the electronics in this. And there are no obvious burn marks on here, so unlikely to be something going bad on this. So I scratched my head and scratched my head and I bought this. It's time to install it in my car. Now, thankfully, I didn't do completely away with the install for my FTM 300 in my car. I just took the bracket off. The holes are all in the same place. The mounting hardware that I left behind, the, the studs that I had already installed in my car to mount the FTM 300. And guess what? The car mount for this thing is identical to the car mount for the FTM 300. And my understanding is that it's also the same for the FTM 200. It should be pretty much plug and play. I'm gonna put some power poles on this thing, get it into my car, get it installed. Let's see how it goes. Boy, these suckers come with some leads, don't they? So these leads have a lot of exposed area on them and we don't need that much. The only portion of them that's tinned is the very tip, call it the uh, maybe a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to crimp this. No, I can't crimp it uh, without trimming it. I was gonna crimp it then trim it, but I think what I have to do is uh, trim it and then crimp it. Nice and secure, repeat with the positive lead. I always need some kind of a reference for which way to put these Anderson power plugs. Come on, click. I wonder how well we're gonna be able to show you this. Let me see, let me, can I switch to a zoom in here? Focus. This isn't quite properly inserted because the lip of the power pole Here's one that's exposed. Isn't clicked over on the ledge of the power pole terminal. And I'm not getting enough grasp here with this tool, which is meant for it, to get it clicked in. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna be able to get that done. Come on. Thing is, I know for a fact that if I just give it a little pressure, it's gonna back out and I don't want it to back out. Can I, is it? Probably shouldn't use my flush cutters for that. And maybe just some of these wires are hanging out just enough to keep it from going in all the way. Come on, click. There we go, it clicked. And I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that. I'm going to take a picture of that up close and insert it in here so you can see what it looks like when it's fully seated. Now comes the part that always gives me trouble and that is figuring out the arrangement of these. Is it right? Is it red is on the left, uh, blacks on the right, or is it the other way around? And then on which orientation because it has two orientations, right? Shielded side, sort of unshielded side, right? Because this is kind of a 
the connector itself has an odd hook to actually make the mating happen. So what I do is I have other power poles that are done and I use them as examples. If you have a better way of doing this, uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know how, because I would love to know. And actually that's about right, right? Because that's how those, those would match up. The red slides on the black, snaps, goes together, cool. I'm gonna put one of these pins to keep things from shifting around. And that way, this can't be undone without taking that pin out. As advertised, the bracket for the FTM 500 is the same bracket as the FTM 300. So this whole pattern that I, that they have here will fit exactly where I had my FTM 300 already. It makes the installation a whole lot easier. Smart of them means one SKU to manufacture for multiple radios. Let's uh, go get this installed. So a quick tip for installing things like your radio inside of your car if, if you have a car that you don't want to damage. These uh, command strips from 3M, they work really well at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match it up with the one that I already have on my dash from my FTM 300. Heal that off and hold it there for something like 20 seconds. This dear viewer is where I tell you I messed up my recording. Bottom line, after I install the head and get the radio set up, the first thing I do is run a backup of the radio into the micro SD card that I have from having the FTM 300 in the car before. That backup is crucial to the next steps. Let's pick it back up once I get back into the shack. So I have a backup of my FTM 300. And I have the FTM 300 software from Yesu installed on my computer. The first thing I'm going to do is open up that software and I'm going to go to communications, get data from SD card, and I'm going to get all. And I'm going to tell it where my SD card is at. And notice that there is no way for me to export the, this file directly to an FTM 500. This is reasonable because the FTM 500 was not around when the FTM 300 was made. In any case, I'm going to export this into my documents and I've already done it. Here it is. These are all the memory channels that I had on my FTM 300. So now that I've exported it, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I don't need to save anything there. And I'm going to open up wrong file. That's for my FT3D. Here's my FTM 500. And remember that I made a backup of the radio, even though it didn't have anything is because I have to be able to export that backup back out and in order to export that backup back out i have to go open the backup from an sd card so i'm going to open up the backup from the sd card i'm again going to go to my ftm 300 sd card even though it's now my ftm 500 sd card and here's the backup that i made inside of my car so this is populated because i've already done it but what i would have what i did is i went to file import and i imported my ftm 300 export and once i did that all of my channels that were saved on my FTM 300 are now part of my FTM 500 configuration. Mind you, I still have to go into settings and change the settings that I want to change for my FTM 500. In here, I've made some of the changes. Look, you do you. I'm not going to go through my changes to this. I'm just showing you that you do still have to do that. And once you do that, once you have all your memories populated into your FTM 500, you go back to communications, send data to SD card all, and you pop it back into the backup for your 500. This is gonna rewrite that file. So if you care about the file that you have right now as a means of restoring your radio the way it was, rename the existing file and export the new file. The new file has to be called what the program wants to call it, CLNFTM. 500d.dat. If you don't name it this, the radio won't be able to read it. So be aware that you have to leave the name of the file as the software wants it or the radio will not be able to read it. Once you hit save, it's going to say, hey, that's already there. Do you want to exist it? Do you want to erase it? You tell it yes. You click on OK. Now this backup is complete onto the FTM 500 folder on the SD card. And now we can go back into the car and import it in. All right, so now that we've done the computer thing, it is time to, oh wow, look at that. The weight of this one is heavier. 
I'm the way to the last one, so it's kind of... I may have to add another strip there. In any case, time to pop the SD card back in. Turn this puppy on. Backup. Read from SD card. All. Okay. And on the FTM300, this thing would reboot after doing this, so I expect this radio to reboot after it reads from the card. And sure enough, it has rebooted. There we go. Look at that. And my stations are exactly what they were on my FTM300. Yeah, buddy. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I don't know why the software that Yezu made available for the FTM500 doesn't have the ability to import the settings and the memories from an FTM300, but now you have a workaround and you see it works. I hope that one was useful to you because it was a fun activity for me. Catch you guys on the next one, 7-3. <laughs>